Hi, boys and girls, it's Marcy Chevalos and it's story time. Today's story is a picture book of Martin Luther King Jr. by David A. Adler. And I'm excited to share this book with you. Let's turn the book over and read a little bit about it. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's great leaders. He was a powerful speaker and he spoke out against laws which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. Dr. King dreamed of a world free of hate, prejudice, and violence. This book is about the life and ideals of an outstanding man. Now, well, I'm excited to read this story. For all of you AR readers, this is an AR book. It is quiz number 19958, level 3.8, worth a half a point. Are you ready to read? All right, let's grow. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's great leaders. He was a powerful speaker and he spoke out against laws which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin's father was a pastor. His mother had been a teacher. Martin had an older sister, Willie Christine, and a younger brother, Alfred Daniel. Young Martin liked to play baseball, football, and basketball. He liked to ride his bicycle and to sing. He often sang in his father's church. Here's Martin, center, with his brother Alfred, Daniel, left, and his sister, Willie Christine, right. How are you like Martin Luther King Jr.? What are some things that you might have in common with him? Hmm, is your dad a pastor? Do you live in Georgia? Do you have a brother and sister? Maybe you like to ride your bicycle like he did. Perhaps you like to sing or play sports like baseball, football, and basketball. Let's keep reading to learn more about Martin. Young Martin played in his backyard with his friends. One day, he was told that two of his friends were no longer play with him because they were white and he was black. Oh, that's so sad. Martin cried. He didn't understand why the color of his skin should matter to anyone. Martin's mother told him that many years ago, black people were brought in chains to America and sold as slaves. She told him that long before Martin was born, the slaves had been set free. However, there were still some people who did not treat black people fairly. I know this must have hurt Martin's feelings. Look at his face. He's very hurt and his mom's hurt too that someone would treat her son so poorly. That is no reason why friends can't be together. In Atlanta where Martin lived and elsewhere in the United States, there were white only signs. Black people were not allowed in some parks, pools, hotels, restaurants, and even schools. Blacks were kept out of many jobs. This was very unfair, boys and girls. Martin learned to read at home before he was old enough to start school. All through his childhood, he read books about black leaders. Let's take a look at some of those black leaders that you might be able to learn more about. George Washington Carver, Harriet Tubman, and Frederick Douglass. Martin was a good student. He finished high school two years early and was just 15 when he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta. At college, Martin decided to become a minister. After Martin was graduated from Morehouse, he studied for a doctorate at Boston University. While he was there, he met Coretta Scott. She was studying music. They fell in love and married. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. Became, began his first job as a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. The next year, Rosa Parks, a black woman, was arrested in Montgomery for sitting in the white-only section of a bus. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a protest. Blacks throughout the city refused to ride the buses. Dr. King said, there comes a time when people get tired of being kicked about. How do you feel when people treat you unfairly? Do you want to continue letting that happen? Or do you want to use your voice to say that's not acceptable? Hmm, 
It looks like that's what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did when he led that protest and said, no, this is not okay. One night while Dr. King was at a meeting, someone threw a bomb into his house. Martin's followers were angry. They wanted to fight. Martin told them to go home peacefully. We must love our white brothers, he said. We must meet hate with love. Wow, that must take a lot that must have taken a lot of courage for him to say or do that. I would be terrified if someone tried to hurt me and my family by throwing a bomb in my house. That is so out of line. But to say that we need to love the people who are throwing bombs or treating you so poorly, that takes a lot of courage. And I know that Martin trusted in God and let his faith inform his actions. That's how he had the courage to do what he did. The bus protest lasted almost a year. When it ended, there were no more white only sections on buses. Hooray! Dr. King decided to move back to Atlanta in 1960. There he continued to lead peaceful protests against white only waiting rooms, lunch counters, and restrooms. He led many marches for freedom. He continued to stand up for what he believed was right. In 1963, Dr. King led the biggest march of all, the March on Washington. More than 200,000 black and white people followed him. I have a dream, he said in his speech. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin or by the content of their character. The next year, in 1964, Dr. King was awarded one of the greatest honors any man could win the Nobel Peace Prize. The country was changing. New laws were passed. Blacks could go to the same schools as whites. They could go to the same stores, restaurants, and hotels. White-only signs were against the law. That is great. It looked like it took many years and many people from many different backgrounds and families to stand together and say this was wrong. When you use your voice to stand up for other people, you are doing right. We stand up for those who need a voice and we stand with our friends when they're being mistreated. And it looks like that led to some positive changes in our country. Dr. King told his followers to protest peacefully, but there were some riots and some violence. Look at this boys and girls, this looks very scary. There's some people who are protesting and there's dogs biting people and there's policemen using clubs and people being arrested. That's a very scary thing. Then in April 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee. He planned to march so black and white garbage workers would get the same pay for the same work. On April 4th in Memphis, Dr. King stood outside his motel room. Another man, James Earl Ray, was hiding nearby. He pointed a rifle at Dr. King. He fired the gun. An hour later, Dr. King was dead. Oh, that's awful. He was doing what was right and someone did very wrong and murdered him. That is very sad and disturbing. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a world free of hate, prejudice, and violence. Carved on the stone which marks his grave are the words, I'm free at last. Well, he's free because he's in heaven with Jesus. He's free where no one can mistreat him, where he is safe and he is loved. And that's sad that he was dreaming of this world and somebody showed hate to him and killed him. That just breaks my heart. But I'm glad that despite those hateful and evil and violent actions, his message still continues today and reminds us that we can do what's right. We can be peaceful, we can love one another and we can um, build a better community. Here are some important dates in Dr. King's life. In 1929, that's when he was born on January 15th. He became a minister in 1947. 1953, he got married. He led a boycott of the buses in 1955 to 56. 1963, he, had the, he led that March on Washington that we saw earlier. 1964, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He was assassinated in 1968 
and in 1983, the third Monday in January was declared an annual federal holiday by the United States Congress to honor the life and ideals of Martin Luther King Jr. Wow, boys and girls, I am so thankful that you read the story with me today. I hope you learned much more about the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and that you enjoyed the story. If you liked learning about Dr. King, go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to hear more stories like this, go ahead and press the subscribe button below. I'd love to share more stories with you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time. Bye, friends.